You ready? Hi, I'm Jack Salt. You're watching Who Am I, hosted by House of Athletes. Alright, there you go. You're time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Jack. You've had a remarkable career as a basketball player so far with amazing accomplishments here in New Zealand as well as in the States. We'll be asking you a series of questions about your career as well as who you are on and off the court. How are you feeling about this? I'm feeling good. I've been out for a while, so it's good to be back training, uh, back competing, playing basketball, and I'm excited for the next few months. As a youngster, basketball wasn't your first sport of preference. Could you explain how the transition to basketball happened and when it happened? Yeah, for sure. I, um, I played a lot of soccer when I was younger. Uh, my dad used to be my coach for a while, and then I kind of hit a growth spurt when I was in high school, and my mom thought I should give basketball a shot. Um, and I really haven't looked back since. Um, I mean, I played a lot of sports in high school and intermediate, but as I got older, I kind of narrowed down to basketball and volleyball and ended up taking basketball all the way. So you stand at 6 or 10, 2.1 metres, and with that height in high school, it definitely helped you emerge in basketball scene. Do you remember a particular summer where you've had your growth spurt and how it changed your game? I'd say fifth form was when I shot up quite a bit over the summer. I maybe grew three, four inches and I came back to school and I was taller than a lot of the guys that used to tower over me when I was a third former. So the height definitely helped me uh, going forward with my time at Westlake. So there are many younger talented basketballers coming through after you. Do you keep an eye out on any of them? Yeah, Sam um, is following Sam at Davidson now. Uh, Davidson, so he's um, done good to get a scholarship there and I'll be following him and his journey. Before your signing with the Virginia Cavaliers, you had a short stint in the NZ NBL with the Super City Rangers and the Waikato Pistons. You were still a teenager back then, so were there challenges in playing in the league against older men? Well, they definitely toughened me up. Um, I think I started playing when I was 16 or 17 with the Rangers and playing against men, even going to practice and practicing against those bigger guys, it definitely toughened me up because I was playing against kids that were my age and smaller than me, so I kind of thought I was bigger than I was, and then I got knocked down pretty quick when I went to train with the men. Um, but it was definitely a good experience for me, and I think it helped my, helped my progression in basketball. Do you think that helped you with your physicality that you showcased in, uh, in the States? For sure. Uh, that's one thing that the coaches and my teammates liked about me. I um, wasn't always the most skillful player, but I put a role on the line. Um, and on defense, coach, the, Coach Bennett would like players that are physical, um, so for me that definitely worked in my favour. You were known as a chiropractor. <laughs> was that a common nickname that people called you in the locker room? Uh, no, that wasn't a common nickname. I think I, I saw that somewhere online, but um, no, nah, like I said, the coaches just knew me to be a physical player, and my teammates did as well. Um, I think I said one screen and then somebody came up with that name, but not within the team. It's a good one though. In 2013, you were selected to represent New Zealand as a member of the Tall Blacks. You were selected as a development player for the Breakers and then later signed with your future family, Virginia Cavaliers. Yeah, it was pretty wild um, to have all those things kind of happen over a short period of time. It was kind of surreal. Um, I got humbled pretty quick when I got over to Virginia, uh, just seeing the level of players there and how intense it was going to be. But yeah, that few months when it was the Tall Blacks, Breakers, and coming to Virginia was definitely a whirlwind of um, emotions. We've got a little segment in the middle here, so it's, it's, we call it the Name the Famous Challenges. Oh yeah, so what am I looking at? So I've got photos on my laptop. Okay, this will be interesting. Yeah, and what you do is, you have 30 seconds, mm -hmm. and for each photo that I show you, there's someone famous, an icon in New Zealand, and you have to oh, name A New Zealand icon? Yeah, New Zealand. Shit <laughs> No, I've done it one person. I've been having no one person. I don't follow news. I don't watch, I don't really watch TV. <laughs> or who's that? Graham Henry. I feel like Graham Henry might be one. If he's one, I, I know his face. <laughs> oh, holy shit, what's our president's name? Prime Minister. Uh, just in order. Okay, cool. I can't get that one wrong. Right, I'm glad I got that. All right, here we go. <laughs> here goes nothing. <laughs> you ready, Jack? I'm ready, bro. Let's get it. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Doing voucher. Ah. Uh, Security is five or no? Two. Ah. Uh, two. Purcell. One. What's the first name? Kaylani. Stephen Adams. Reese Dalby. Just in the old day. Three, two, I forget. one. Jack Sol. <laughs> TJ. 
TJ Panera. Nice. Wow, that was long enough. But what's um, what's those five guys called? Both town. Both town. I wasn't gonna see any winning. <laughs> you only messed up by showing the uh, the New Zealand tour firms. I don't know. Right? <laughs> More like a dick. I'm just glad you got this guy right. Yeah, I know. That's a, that's a slim jack right there. How long are you? 114, probably. How much do you weigh? Right now, I'm about 120. Jeez. But I was 126, so. So, you, what's your plan? What would you? 116, ideally. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I need to, need to oh. slim down. But Should be alright, though? Yeah, no, I'm on, the, on track so far. The biggest thing you can't just cut immediately and reduce your food and work out crazy because it's just not sustainable. So I think I've done it at a pretty steady pace. So I've got Logan Bodica with me <laughs> on my on my side watching yeah. over me. That's good. Do you remember anyone that you kind of really saw and you're like, wow, this guy is a lot more athletic than, who, than I am? Yeah, there was uh, Marmody Diakite. He was very young when I first got there, but he would come and just We'd see him when he'd come on his visits. And one time I was doing an in-between-the-leg layup under the hoop with another big guy and we were just messing around. And he comes, walks on the free throw line and puts it between his legs and dunks it. And I just told him to go away. And I walked away. And that was probably, <laughs> that was one of the most wild moments I've had. Virginia Cavaliers, also known as the Wahoos, had an incredible season last year with the record of 35-3, and winning the NCAA championship over Texas Tech. Every game leading up to the finals was a nail-biter. How does a team prepare for those games? And as a vet on the team, do you remember any advice that you gave to the younger players? A lot of it came from the coaches. Um, the coaches were really calm. Every game, we treated it as, as a game, which it was. We were just doing it one game at a time. Uh, coaches did a great job of kind of relaxing everyone and just prepping for a basketball game. Um, and the players, none of the players really needed to be told anything. Everyone was locked in. Um, all ages, so it was a, it was awesome to be a part of that team. It must have been a crazy atmosphere after winning the championship. What are the things you saw back at campus, and what are the things you remember? Are there any stories that you tell people now after winning the title? It was nuts uh, to come back to Charlottesville and have the whole community kind of just stop. Um, we got back, we got off the plane, and we were driving down the airport, and fire trucks just shot water over our bus. And then as we were driving back to our school, cars just stopped on the road and they were just waving and honking at us. On like a, it was like a freeway, like a motorway. Um, so it was, yeah, it's nothing like I've ever experienced. It was a surreal experience. Yeah, we did have a parade at our football stadium and it got pretty packed. So that was a, that was a pretty wild experience as well. Yeah, so senior night is the player's last home game uh, in his arena. So for me, it was my last home game at JPJ, John Paul Jones Arena. And I was fortunate enough to have my mum fly over from New Zealand, my dad who lives in Spain fly over, and my sister who goes to school at Oklahoma. Uh, to have all three of them there really meant a lot for me. So we have read somewhere that you're a huge Chipotle fan. Mm -hmm. Is that how you pronounce it? Chipotle? Chipotle, yes, yeah, the one. My mum says Chipotle, she'll never change. She says that every time, but it is Chipotle. And sometimes you would eat it five times per week when you were in the States. Now, there is no Chipotle in New Zealand. But do you have a go-to restaurant to please your Mexican appetite? Mexicali is pretty good, but it doesn't compare to Chipotle. I can eat Chipotle, I want to say every night of the week and not be sick, but I, I haven't actually done that. But I could have Chipotle five nights of the week and be perfectly fine. Like it's just, I've never had a food like that that I can have so consistently and love. Um, so yeah, Chipotle was my spot. And I am very excited to be back in America because of Chipotle. <laughs> You have recently signed with the Canterbury Rams for the upcoming sales in the NBL season. How are you feeling about heading to Christchurch and playing for the city? I'm really excited. One of my best friends, Isaiah Wilkins, played there last season and he loved it. Uh, he said the team culture was really good, mix, great guys, so I'm really excited to be heading down there. And for me, I was out for a long time, so I'm just itching to get back and play. So we about that, or yeah, if you want to talk about the experience in summer league, yeah, bro, it's crazy experience. So yeah. if you want to ask whatever, and I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll give any Sweet. insight I can. Yeah, yeah. So after the draft, I got into a camp with Phoenix. Yeah, it was a trial. Yeah, and from there, it was like a two, it was like a week kind of trial, and then I made it. So the next week, we had camp with Phoenix for one and a half weeks, which was awesome. Just to be around the NBA facility to work out. I was staying at a hotel right across the road from the arena, so I could just go home whenever I wanted. Um, and then we went to Vegas and we're all 
all NBA teams were there, so I got to see some friends. It was just an awesome experience. Was there anyone that stood out in the summer league that you remember that we, when you saw them, you're like, wow, like this guy is the real deal? Uh, not a player that was playing, but LeBron was there and AD was there, and they met. They dabbed each other up, and I was just all I wanted to do was pull out my phone and just video it. But I was with all the NBA players and coaches, so I kind of oh yeah, this is this is normal. But I was just starstruck just for those two guys to be right in front of me, uh, sitting down watching a game. It was an amazing experience. And that must have been just after like AD signed with Lakers, I assume. Yeah, it was. It might, I don't know if it was the first time they met, but it was. I, know, I mean, like after the signing, but it might have been the first time on camera in a public. Um, environment and the crowd just started going nuts. I was like, what's going on? I look down and I see just these two about to dap each other up. I like, damn, this is awesome. So I'm going back to Virginia soon to work out. Uh, heading over there February 25th. Uh, see some old friends and get in shape. Uh, keep, keep getting myself right for the NBL season. And then after that, heading to Canterbury to start. Start officially with the Rams. Um, and anyone else, you should probably have Alonzo Bird on the show. He would be, he'd be a great guest to have. He's very funny, he's a great guy. I said just have fun, um, enjoy your time playing. If you want to take it seriously, start looking at the stuff you have to do to get yourself to that next level. Uh, start pushing yourself, training with other guys, better players, and just yeah, have fun while you're at it. Awesome, awesome. that's a wrap. <laughs> Easy fellas, Easy. How did you feel? I felt great, how did you feel?